Hello, I am Helios, and I am subscribed to Learn Liberty for one reason. They make videos that are well thought out and deviate from well thought out at some point. It's a little game I play. You know, figure out where they screwed up royally. Mouse cursor off the screen. But yeah, um, that's not so with this video about, uh, what is it? Um, yeah, why, what we should think about chain stores. Okay, most of, their, most of the arguments in there were fine. Two of the arguments in there were stupid. I mean, it was just, these two arguments, in order to make them, you have to be an economic illiterate. You have to know nothing about economics. The fact that this guy is a professor at, um, like, at some, some university, it, that is associated with a state, like Rhode Island University or something, I don't know. But the fact that he's a professor is absolutely humiliating to the entire United States, um, to the entire United States uh, education system. We should, like, even though it's a private college, we should be humiliated that this guy's a teacher. Here are the two arguments I'm talking about. These are about, like, these are the merits of chain stores. Number one, having a chain store in an area increases competition. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, seriously, having multiple stores of the same kind taking up store space in one area increases competition. Show me the logic behind that. Please, please show me the logic about having fewer stores in an area increases competition. I, I, I gotta see your work on that. Oh, please. Oh, please. And he makes this whole thing about these stores having to, you know, uh, innovate and whatnot. Yeah, guess what? Mom and pop stores innovate. They innovate all the time. They keep their prices lower than those stores. They keep their prices lower than most chain stores. They have better service. They're just better stores. They don't improve. They're just the default choice because they're everywhere and they get the priority on new products. I mean, take guitar stores, for instance. I know two really good guitar stores in my area that I can get to. One of them specializes in a lot of vintage stuff. They sell a lot of really nice old stuff, usually way out of my price range. But they have some good, um, they have some good uh, lower price stuff, too. Very classy store. Very, very classy. The other store, it's basically like, it's Basically, it's kind of in a warehouse, sort of. It's kind of in a warehouse type place. It's got carpeting down, but it looks a lot like a warehouse. Their prices, though, dirt cheap. Most expensive, uh, I think it's a base in the store. Yeah, I think it's a base. It's got a graphite neck. It costs like um, eleven hundred dollars. I mean, for that's that's just dirt cheap right there. They have supremely good uh, deals, but their guitars aren't really. Like they're not high class, they're not, you know, vintage type of things. They tend to be, you know, more Ibanez oriented. They have a lot of Schecter. If you don't understand what I'm saying, don't worry. Basically they sell the lower end and this other music uh, guitar store sells the higher end, basically. Guitar Center? A guitar that would be about, you know, that would be around a hundred bucks at, um, at uh, this bargain basement store would be around 200 bucks there. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, Guitar Center doesn't even sell the older stuff. And the height, and this, they don't, their acoustic guitars that they sell at Guitar Center are, high, are generally higher priced than the ones at the uh, classier music store. Meanwhile, their solid body guitars are way more expensive than the ones at the lower price store. Plus, the people there are, you know, the owners. They're very intimately connected with the people there. Tremendously great service. And these are not chains. That's what I have to emphasize. These are not chains. They have great service. They sell things they sell things that you just wouldn't find at the chain. And this goes for basically all chain stores. It's ridiculous. I mean the idea that chain stores innovate is ridiculous. The idea of having fewer types of stores and fewer um, independent stores in the world increases competition is ridiculous. But the next one, the next one that uh, this guy puts out, 
chain stores increase variety. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, oh my god. Alright, let me try and put this in perspective. A store that is selling unique food generally doesn't turn into a chain. Why? Because generally when you have more unique food, you have less of a demand for it. This, these, tends to be, these tend to be ethnic restaurants. You know, you have people who come over from another country and cook the cuisine of that country. These people don't end up with restaurant empires. They end up with local institutions. They end up with little restaurants. And that vastly increases the variety. People cook the food in different ways. They have very, very different, uh, very different restaurants. They have different atmospheres. With chains, you have the same basic atmosphere repeated all over the country. And generally, that atmosphere. This is important for the video because he says, you know, you know, lots of cities start to look the same, but within the city, you get a lot more diversity. See? Bullshit. You don't get more diversity because the model that succeeds for these is a model that is very generic and generally, you know, all-encompassing appealing. Why? So it can appeal in Washington and Florida and Texas and New York and Massachusetts and Delaware and Colorado and Ohio and Oklahoma. So it'll appeal everywhere. So everyone will go. Why? Because they're everywhere. Everyone is their target. Is their target demographic? And this other argument I just want to touch on briefly: this idea that you get consistent service at a chain store. No, it doesn't work like that. Some ch they tend to be more consistent than going to completely different businesses, obviously. But you know, one example from my childhood is uh, going to Wendy's, and you know. There was this one Wendy's that handed out Frosties with kids' meals. Other Wendy's were like, what? What do you... No, you don't get a Frosty with a kid's meal, you know? No. <laughs> I mean, the consistency argument, yeah, makes some sense. Yeah, you get some degree of consistency. But the bottom line is, it's not that much. Not enough to really, like, justify their entire existence. And, yeah, they do get subsidies from the government. Yeah, that's... Good, a good point to point out. Us progressives have been pointing it out forever. Welcome to the club, libertarians. Good, good to see you here. And the sad thing is, I tend to see myself as a libertarian in a lot of respects, but if this is what libertarianism is, then no, I don't want to be associated with it. I mean, what's stopping me is, is the crap arguments. So yeah. I'll make another video on that at some point, but yeah, I got—I actually have a number of videos I gotta post, so I'll get around to that. Anyways, uh, for now, Helios fifty-eight sixty-eight. Goodbye, and thank you for watching.